The alumni very excited to get to Pasadena because for Ohio State, first trip to the Rose Bowl since the 96 season. For Oregon, first trip to Pasadena since the 94 season. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you here with the preview of the Rose Bowl game presented by City here on CBSSports.com. And let's bring in CBS Sports' Spencer Tillman to break this down. And Spence, it's going to be a great atmosphere. And you got two great programs going to Pasadena. But when you look at Ohio State, three straight BCS losses. It's their fifth straight BCS game. And of course, the image of the Big Ten will be put on display in a big picture. So how crucial is this ball game for Ohio State to come out and not just play well? Because they did that last year against Texas, but win. Well, they got to win. I mean, listen, uh, in the whether you're talking Big Ten, Pac-10, it's a zero-sum proposition. You know, in the unique relationship, the tradition that they've had, the winner going to the Rose Bowl, uh, pending you know a national championship opportunity that they would be playing in. It's important. Uh, image and impression matters a great deal in this rivalry in the Big Ten, in the Pac-10, especially. Uh, I think that these two teams are really set. This is going to be a fun game to watch because the others has strength, where the other team has a weakness, and we'll see if each can exploit the other's uh, advantage or disadvantage. Advantage. Well, the strength that you're talking about with Oregon and Chip Kelly, they run the football. That's what Oregon does. And with Ohio State, one of five teams in the FBS to not allow a 100-yard rusher, which gives in this ballgame? Well, that's a great one, and that's the matchup I'm looking for. I want to see if the young runner, Michael James, who's going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate next year, is really up to this challenge. Because if you look at the teams that really had success against Oregon, they had great defensive line play. Now, you may not have thought that uh, Purdue, who may not be going bowling this year, or that Boise State, who is bowling, obviously, uh, had great or is known for great defensive line play. But that's what they did, because Oregon runs a lot of misdirection, Jason, and you've got to be disciplined. You've got to be sound. It's not just about putting pushing up the field and being dominant from that standpoint. It's about being smart, playing with controlled aggression. And those two teams, Purdue and Boise State, did a fine job of that. And I think that Ohio State, given Jim Trussell's background and pedigree, is more than capable of doing that and doing it with the kind of force that those other two teams, Purdue and Boise State, lack. Yeah, and, and he's feeling some heat, too, in Columbus. I mean, yes, this is their fifth straight bowl game, and they've won five straight Big Ten titles, but they want to see bowl victories. That's what people yeah. in Columbus want to see. It's no longer yeah. just okay to beat Michigan. Now you got to win in the bowl <laughs> as well. Uh, Spence, the other side for Ohio State, too, where their weakness is offensively. And, and they are not an explosive offensive team, which you have had to be to keep up with Oregon this season. What do you yeah. think the job will be for Terrell Pryor? I think it'll be what he did to get them to where they are right now. Manage the football game and rely on the defense. Just do not turn the football over. Again, last year, the young quarterback had to lead the team in rushing. His numbers are down just a little bit, but he knows that he can run the football. If he doesn't just throw interceptions, they'll have a chance to compete and win if they keep the scoring low. Now, the question is, can the defense keep this Oregon team that averaged over 40 points uh, in the last 11 games that they had after the loss to open up the season? Can they keep them under their average. They've got to keep them at least 20 points below their season average. If they don't, Ohio State will not get that victory and that radiant heat that you were talking about, it gets turned up a little bit more on Jim Trestle. Yeah, and there's a lot of other parts to this too because you know, with Ohio State, there's been a couple of suspensions, guys that won't uh, yeah. make it out to the bowl game. Uh, Ray Small, uh, Roy Small, uh, excuse me, Ray Small mm -hmm. will not be part of this, uh, this mm -hmm. ball game, not academically eligible, so a couple other guys as well. Uh, for Oregon, though, with the turnaround of the season, Spence, and a guy that you saw Boise State, the punch, suspended mm -hmm. for indefinitely Blunt. for the Le season. Garrett Blunt, yeah. Garrett Blunt, they brought him back, and he had an impact in the Oregon State game. Now that he's had another month to get ready, mm -hmm. is that the type of game with LaMichael James that maybe we see more from LeGarrette Blunt here in the Rose Bowl? I don't know if you'll see more. I'm not so sure it'll be necessary, but I will tell you this. If Ohio State plays up to their level, you will see them try to do something offensively. I'm talking about Oregon. Chip Kelly come up with something to try to confuse them because that's the only way that they can have success. Uh, you've got two great backs. How do you deploy both of them to make the defense be impacted or affected by what you're trying to do? Uh, I don't think that they'll disrupt their continuity. LaMichael James is the guy that will get the bulk of the carries, but again, look for a new wrinkle in this offensive system to try to summon Somehow, if Ohio State dominates them, to, to really confuse them. I think it's going to be a fun game to watch from that standpoint. Watch the interior line play. Don't get so consumed with what's happening on the perimeter. Watch the interior line on both sides. We'll see how it all plays out, Spence, on New Year's Day. Who do you like for the victory? 
I'm going with Oregon. I just like what Chip Kelly has done from stem to stern, uh, firing your best runner on the team, perhaps your best player. Uh, that was outstanding. And reeling off six straight the way he did, that was the good decision and right decision then, and it still remains the same decision. And I think reinstating him has been the right decision because he really yep. has been uh, as apologetic as everybody would like him to be, and, and I think he really means it when you talk to the kid. We'll see how it all plays you out right. on New Year's Day. Spencer T., thank you very much. All right, Jason, we'll see you, buddy. All right, folks, for more on this game, keep it right here with CBSSports.com. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.